Hello everyone, welcome to module 2 and in module 2 you are going to learn about Glue Data Catalog. So let's get started. Before I move on to the uh, topic, I want to let you know that all the videos and labs with the videos are created in a continuation and they are interconnected to each other. So if you want to do the lab, it is very important that you do lab in the sequence of the video and you also watch video in the sequence so that you can understand the topic in connection with each other. Okay, so with that, let's get started. So what exactly is AWS Glue Data Catalog? When you build a data platform, you work with data and your data is stored into various types of location. It could be an object storage into S3 or some kind of relational database sitting inside JDBC uh, database, or you can have a warehouse solution like Redshift, or you can have a NoSQL type of data sitting inside DynamoDB kind of uh, service. And when you keep data across these different type of storage, you want to give a name to the data. You want to give an identification to the data. And along with the identification, you also want to provide additional information. For instance, what is the data location? What is uh, the format of the data? What is the schema of the data? What kind of data statistics are there with uh, this data storage? And this whole complete thing, when you describe your data, uh, you give a name to your data, you provide a data schema, data location, data statistics, um, all this information combined is called a data catalog. So each of the data which you keep into your data platform should have a data catalog and this data catalog should define the data uh, with a name, with a format, with a data location, with schema, and with other properties like data statistics. So why we need to create data catalog? What is, why it is important to create data catalog? The problem is that if you have your data in your data platform, but if you have not given a, this data any kind of identification, any kind of name, then the data is a dark data. It is not searchable, it is not discoverable. Data is there in your platform, but no one knows where the data is. So by creating a catalog for your data, you are giving searchability and discoverability to your data. That means people can come to data catalog and know what different data exist in your data platform just looking at the catalog. And when they try to find details about the catalog, they know additional information about the data, like what is the location of data, what is the format of data, what is the schema of the data, those kind of things. So how is this data catalog organized or structured? So at the top, you have got Glue Data Catalog. And in Glue Data Catalog, actually you can create multiple databases. So you can create more than one databases. And in those databases, you can create multiple tables. And these tables are actually the catalog which are keeping information about your data in the data platform. So if you have a data in S3 bucket, one, the ta one table will represent that S3 bucket data. If your data is, say, in a relational database, one table will represent data uh, a table data in that relational database. Similarly, a table can also present a data, uh, a table can also present a data stored into say DynamoDB, uh, DynamoDB table. So organization is pretty straightforward. Uh, at the top level, you have a data catalog. Under that, you can have multiple databases. Under that, you can have multiple tables. And these tables are the unit uh, at, at which label you give a name or identification to your data in your data platform and you also associate other information like schema and format. So how does this table structure look like? Well, because it looks like all the information, basically if you look at the database, database is nothing but it's a collection of table. The actual data level information is actually in the table. So what different set of information table stores. If you try to look at very high level, the uh, 
uh, the table stores information about the data like what is the format of the data and what is the location of the data. So it will have a name of the data. Uh, it will say like in this example, it says that, okay, name, uh, there is a name of the table. Uh, and then, uh, and with that table name, actually you can search or discover this data. It says it's a JSON type of data and the data is stored into S3 bucket and that bucket location is also there. So you get location and format information. Then you get information from the data statistics point of view. So for instance, how many objects are there? So since it is an S3 bucket, so the so depending on your um, uh, data storage location, uh, data statistics could be different. Uh, in this case, it is uh, an S3 example. So you have information like how many uh, object counts are there? How many records are there? What is the average record size? Um, what is the compression type used? So information like that are used with uh, are stored into your data statistics. And finally comes the most important part, which is what is the schema of the data? So your data is presented in a tabular fashion. So your data uh, will have columns and each of these columns will have their data types. And it uses all different native site types of data types. So you can have integers, strings, Boolean, even struct type of data, which can be used to present a very complex, uh, complex uh, hierarchical, uh, complex hierarchical uh, column information. So the schema holds the information about the columns in the data, data types, and also partition information. This partition part, I'm going to talk later in a different uh, video, okay? Uh, but yeah, it's, it's schema uh, tells you the whole structure about your data. So these are the information you keep into your data catalog table structure. Now, how do I create this glue data catalog table? There are three methods you can use. Uh, of course, you can use AWS SDK or CLI to create uh, a glue data catalog. Uh, so you can run a CLI or you can um, make an API call to AWS SDK and you can, uh, and you can create catalog. You can create a uh, catalog through AWS Management Console and we are going to do that in this particular uh, lab, uh, in this particular video at later point of time. You can also use AWS Glue Crawler to create the catalog. And AWS Glue Crawler, we are going to cover in the upcoming, uh, upcoming videos. So there are roughly three methods you can use to create a data catalog. So this is a very quick uh, introduction about data catalog. I'm going to uh, talk about data catalog again in another video. Uh, but at this point of time, it is very important that you see how this catalog is created and how you can configure lake formation with uh, the catalog and how you can use this catalog, uh, catalog to query data using Amazon Athena. So let's jump to the lab. So here in my AWS Management Console, um, I have um, already logged in and I have logged in uh, in the Ireland region. So uh, we are using Ireland as a region for this particular, uh, the, all the labs in fact. So if you're following me, I will recommend you also uh, use Ireland and the region. So we are in the same region and there is no issues related to features or uh, services of label. Now I have logged in with uh, one of the user accounts which has got administrative privilege in this AWS account. So now let's get started. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create some data into S3 bucket and then I'm going to catalog that data manually uh, in, uh, in AWS Glue and Lake Formation and then I'm going to query that data. So that's what we are going to do in the demo today. So let's go and create S3 bucket. So let's go to S3 bucket. And then in uh, S3 bucket, I'm going to um, cre click on create bucket. And there I'm going to give my bucket name as uh, Dojo um, Glue uh, Lake uh, and then I'll simply put a number here. Yeah, uh, and you can pick any name you want, but uh, uh, make sure that whatever bucket name you put, you know that. Make sure your region is Ireland, and then I simply go and create the bucket. So now the bucket is uh, created, so I'm going to look for my bucket. Where is my bucket? So I've got Dojo Glue Lake 01. 
In this bucket, I'm going to create a couple of folders. So first I'm going to create, uh, say, a customers folder. So I'm going to create a folder, uh, I will call it um, customers. And this, this folder I'm going to use uh, to store um, uh, one of the data files and try to catalog that into glue um, uh, in glue and lake formation. So first I create this uh, customers folder. Then I'm going to create one more folder and this I'm saying a scripts folder. Uh, and I'm not going to use this folder now, but I will definitely need it at later point of time and like in some other labs, but I'm going to do it now so that we are ready for those labs as well. And then I'm going to also create a folder called uh, Athena. Uh, and this I'm going to configure let, letter uh, as, a, as a sync location for your Athena. So when I show you, it will make more sense. So right now simply create one more folder called Athena. So now I have got three folders created over here, customers, scripts, and Athena. Now I'm going to upload a file to my customers uh, folder and then that file uh, I'm going to configure as a data catalog uh, table. Uh, so what, I've, what uh, in the previous uh, video I showed you that uh, you uh, have to download uh, lab files through the description box given, uh, link given in the description box. Uh, that link I have provided in the description box uh, here as well. Um, so you can download the lab files if you have not already downloaded. And if you go to, uh, if you, and that's a zip file, if you unzip that file, you will see folder structure like that. So what I want here is that I want to use this uh, glue data catalog uh, folder and in that I have got this customers.csv file which I want to upload into the customers folder in my S3 bucket. So let me go back to my S3 bucket again and I go to my uh, customers folder then I want to simply upload and add file and here I want to simply uh, upload the uh, customer's uh, folder, customer's file over here. So simply uh, the, the lab files which have been provided to you in that uh, go to the glue folder over there and upload the customers.csv file from there to the customer's folder in this particular bucket. Pretty straightforward. Now what we need to do is that we need to see how this file look like. So I can simply select that file, go to actions. I want to say query with the S3 select. Um, and I simply keep everything default. It is a CSV file, comma separated. There is no compression. So I think I can simply run the query here. And when I run the query, I can see that I have got uh, a file like this uh, where I've got uh, um, some numbers which are my customer IDs, uh, some names which are my customer names, then I have got some emails which are my customer email, and then I have got this NA and EMEA and these are my customer territories. So this is a comma separated four column file uh, where uh, the first column is customer ID, then customer name, then customer email, and finally customer territory. So this looks good to me. So what Next I'm going to do is that I'm going to, so my data is already there in the customer's, uh, uh, customer's folder. It looks good. Now I'm going to go to lake formation and start configuring that. So let's go to the lake formation. So I go to AWS lake formation. And there, if you are using it for the first time, then it will ask you to, it will say uh, you add yourself as administrator. So you simply have to select add myself and simply say get started. But if suppose you do not, do not get this prompt, then you don't need to worry much. You simply go in the left hand side, click on this administrative roles and task. And there you see um, uh, data lake administrator. And if you see that your login name, like AWS user here, is already present over there, then you're good. If you're not already present over there, simply click on choose administrator, select your login name, and then simply save it. And that way you will add yourself as administrator uh, in uh, AWS Lake Formation. So it looks good. So now next step, I'm going to create a data lake location. Uh, so I'll simply register the data lake location. 
And in this case, I'm going to use a very top level location. So I'll simply say this Dojo Glue Lake 01 in that uh, actually, you know what, uh, I'm simply going to select that folder, as, that bucket as a location. So I'm simply saying this Dojo Glue Lake 01 is actually my data lake location. So that means all my data in the data lake is going to be under this particular bucket. Well, you can also provide uh, in uh, like a location to a particular folder also, but uh, I'm just giving a top level uh, bucket uh, uh, location information here so that, um, uh, so that any data I create under that uh, lake formation will have access to that data, permission to that data and simply keep uh, my IM role to default and that will be one of the uh, built-in service role, AWS service role for lake formation data access. And this role is used by lake formation to access this particular bucket. And that's what we are doing over here. So simply you register the location. So now the, uh, your location is registered. Now we are going to create a database. And in database, I'm going to simply say, click on my create my database. Um, and then I'll simply say, uh, okay, I'm creating a database. My name of the database is, I'll call it say Dozo database. I come down and then tell me the location here. And then in this case, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm saying that I, since I'm keeping, keeping all my data into this particular bucket, I'm giving simply this location. Again, here also, if you want, if you think this database will keep information, uh, the, the, all the information in this database will be under a particular folder only, you can provide location till a particular folder as well. Then I'm simply taking this off. So by default, uh, Lake Formation provides backward compatibility and for that it gives you IAM based access control. But since we are using Lake Formation and we want to use Lake Formation security, which we are going to cover in the next module, I'm going to simply tick this check off. That means I'm saying the database I'm going to create and the tables I'm going to create, those tables and databases will simply use Lake Formation based security. So make sure that you have tick off this particular checkbox and simply create the database. So now my database is also created. This all looks very good. Now I'm going to create a customer's table under this database. And this customer table will simply be a uh, catalog for my data is stored into S3 bucket. The same data you uploaded a couple of minutes back into the S3 bucket. So I simply go to my uh, tables um, uh, menu and I want to create a new table. And I select a table, then let's say the table name is uh, customers. And then um, what is the database you want to create table? I want to create it in Dojo database. Uh, then uh, you don't Check, check this particular thing. This is something, uh, an advanced topic, which I'm going to cover later. So make sure you do not tick this thing. So keep this clean, keep this blank. You come down. Yeah, you have to provide the location where your data is stored. So in our case, the location is um, in S3 bucket. If you go to uh, Dojo Glue Data Lake and go to the customers folder, this, this is the folder the data is stored. So you have to make sure that you go to the folder level, you have not to provide the object name here because uh, when you provide the information till the folder level, all the objects under that folder are then covered under the schema of the table which you are creating. So I'm simply providing the folder location where my data is stored. So you can see my data is actually stored under uh, this particular uh, folder uh, and that's what I'm uh, doing here. So in fact, let me uh, cancel it. It looks like I click something else. So I'll make sure that I'm selecting only folder, not the real object. So I'm simply selecting the folder. That's it. So I got my S3 Dojo Glue Data Lake and customers. So what is the format of data? I showed you in my S3, uh, uh, S3 select query that my data is in CSV format and my uh, delimiter is a uh, comma separated, so I'm all good. Now here I can start adding my schema information. Now if you're using a crawler, crawler can identify the schema automatically, you can do it for you, but I'm going to cover that topic at a later point of time. So I'm going to manually create the schema over here. So 
there are two methods I can provide a, a JSON file and that JSON file I can use to uh, upload the schema but I'm going to do even simpler I will simply add each of the columns manually so my first column is uh, customer ID and that column is actually of integer type and I add that column then my next column is actually customer name customer name and that is actually a string type so if I am not wrong if I can do yes string string type add then third column is actually customer email and that is also a string type I'm all good and the fourth column is actually Terry uh, yeah territory and that is also a string type so I added four columns manually because I showed you data. The first column uh, in the data in the CSV file was customer ID, then customer name, then customer email, and, and finally the territory. So I have provided all the information I need. I have provided I want to create a table. This is my table name. This is my database name. Uh, then I also provided information like uh, where my data is stored, which folder, what is the format of my data, what is the delimiter, and I provided the schema information. And then, oops, and then with that, I'm going to create the table. So here I create a table. So this is a manual creation of a table and as I mentioned earlier that I'm going to show you also how to use crawler. So now my table is created, but since I'm using a lake formation based security, I don't have, even if I've created a table, I don't have access to this table. But since I'm a local administrator, I can grant access to myself. And later I will show you how you can grant access to others as well. So let, let, let me give uh, access to myself. So I simply click on, so here I'm on my uh, tables actually. So I can select my table and then simply go to actions, click on grant and I'm giving access to myself. And my account is actually AWS user account, same user account. And then um, I'm giving uh, named data catalog resources. I'm not using uh, tags. Tags I have discussed as a topic in advanced module, so you can cover it there. So for now, I'm using named data catalog resources. Here is my database name, DojoDB, automatically selected. Here's my customer name uh, already selected. We are not using data filters. Da data filters I'm going to discuss in the next module, so let's skip this particular configuration. And here I can give different types of permission. And again, permissions I'm going to cover um, in the next module, but uh, you can see here it's pretty self uh, descriptive. You can give select, insert, delete, describe, alt, uh, alter or drop permission. And if you say I am super, then you get all the permissions. And since I'm administrator, I'm going to give super permission to me. That means I can do anything with this particular table. So I granted myself permission. If you go to data lake permissions, uh, you can see that AWS user is actually a database administrator, but he has also got access to this customer's table and it has got full access to the table. You can see it has got full access to the table. So you're all good. So now I have got um, my uh, data configured. Now I want to query the data. And for querying purpose, I'm going to use Athena. So I, I go to uh, Athena, I click on Athena, select Athena, and then open the Athena console. If you are using Athena for the first time, then you would have not got Athena sync uh, um, configured. Since Athena is serverless, it uses S3 as a location to store uh, the query results or any kind of temporary value. So you have to define a S3 bucket location for that. For that purpose, you click on this settings menu and then simply click on manage. If you already have an S3 bucket configured over here, you don't need to do anything. You're already configured, you're ready to go. But if this is not configured, you can simply click on the uh, browse here. Then simply uh, go to, uh, yeah, go to my glue data lake uh, bucket uh, bucket, and then in that I've got Athena folder. I'm simply going to select that folder that that folder I created for this purpose only. I simply choose it. 
Now, I have provided the location to the Athena folder in my bucket and that way I'm telling Athena that, hey, if you want to store any temporary query result or any final result, you can simply use this particular folder for that purpose. Um, yeah, and simply save it. So now my Athena is configured. Now I can go to, uh, actually I can go to the left hand side and if I click on the data sources, uh, uh, yeah, I can I can see AWS uh, data catalog as a data source which has got a database, which has got a table and everything. So let's come back to Athena. Oops, and then if I go to query editor, and in the left hand side, you can see I have got my Dojo database and my uh, customers table. If I say I want to preview my data, I simply say I want to preview my table. And I run the query. It shows you the, it's saying, saying that, hey, select star from Dojo database, customers table, only 10 records. And you can see here, it's showing the 10 records from my uh, table. So this table is nothing but uh, this table is presenting the data is stored into the S3 bucket and you're simply running an Athena query to see your data into your S3 um, bucket. So that was the lab activities uh, we wanted to cover today to explain you how um, how data catalog works and how you can give some basic permission on the data catalog and how you can use uh, Amazon Athena to actually uh, query the data. Now uh, it is the end of the module. Now uh, see you again in the next topic, next module, where we are going to talk about how you can give data access to uh, data access uh, in your uh, lake formation. And it is very important to cover this topic at, uh, at this point of time, because later when we start talking about crawlers or glue job, then at that point of time, uh, you will find that, um, you know, you are giving permission to the roles used by crawlers and glue job. So it is very important that we understand the data access control in lake formation uh, so that uh, that fundamental is covered and then we'll straight jump to some other modules like crawlers and glue job in the uh, latter modules. So that's all for today guys for this particular topic. See you in the next topic soon. Bye-bye.